वेलकम फ्रेंड्स ऑन दिस वेरी स्पेशल डे द भंडारा ऑफ ग्रेट मास्टर हजूर महाराज बाबा साहुल सिंह जी माई मास्टर हु इनिशिएटेड मी ऑन द नाइन्थ ऑफ मार्च 1936 एंड इंस्टॉल्ड हिम सेल्फ इन साइड मी आई डिड नॉट सी ही सेड ही हैड आई डिड नॉट सी हिम I questioned. I said, "You said that when you initiate somebody, you sit inside that person. I don't see you, and I tried to see you. I can't see you. I see other very funny images." He said, "No, you will see one day. One day I saw, but it was after a lot of questioning, after a lot of doubts, skepticism." it was not easy i didn't want to believe anything unless i see it i can't even believe that i was initiated because i did not see anything it took many years for me to come to the conclusion that this was a path worth trying because i was looking for something which the path offered would be available if i follow certain small practices but i was offered the same thing by so many others different religions offered me i got baptized into christianity I had to dip into water for catholic baptism i got converted to islam to see if muhammad is giving me the answers i went into many rituals with the yogis sitting in the himalayan mountains and spent time with them i tried all kinds of yoga that i could look at i did want to find something i said i must examine if there is something available not only with what great master is saying because my meeting with great master was accidental it was totally accidental that my father was following him and was born in that family that was not good enough reason for me to be initiated or to follow him so that is why i searched all over I think I must have met more gurus than anybody I know. Anybody told me there is this holy man who can tell you something, I would go to him. My search was very serious. I didn't want to leave any anything unexplored. I felt, am I going against my own master's instructions to follow the meditation procedure he has told me? which i was not doing i was going to other people am i disobeying my master but then i remembered my master's words when he initiated me he said what i am giving you is what i got from my master baba jamal singh it has worked for me i hope it will work for you and if it does not you can go anywhere and find something better and if you find something better come and tell me also because i will also then follow that these are great masters words given to me at the time of initiation therefore i said i am not disobeying him i am following his instructions i am looking for something better than what he has given so there was nothing wrong with what i was doing after examining for several years and comparing what other people what offering and talking about and comparing with what the great master offered i discovered that what the great master offered was the best in my circumstances so i accepted it and then i began working on what he had told me of course when you work on it you work seriously i thought the main thing that you have to do is regular strong intensive meditation that means long time two and a half hours suggested by master is just for ordinary people not for a serious seeker he should be a lot more i tried up to 8 hours in one day <laughs> the more i tried the more tired i got <laughs> and i said what's going on i see some little bit of flashes of light and all that which I later discovered if I hit my eye, I can see the same flashes. 
somebody came to me, I can see light, uh, hit you on the head, you'll see more light. <laughs> so what is the great thing about it? I am not looking for light, I am not looking for little flashes, I am not looking for little red color or blue color, I am not looking for waterfalls inside, I am looking for the truth. I am looking for who am I? I am looking for the truth about what this creation is all about. I am looking for why people are so different if, if they have been created by the same God. Why there is so much discrimination if he is our father and we are all his children? How can some be poor and some be rich and how can some be so sick and some are so healthy? These are my questions. Little flashes of light don't answer any questions. I wanted my fundamental questions. What is the purpose of life? Why are we human beings? Why this world has been created? These were very fundamental questions. And none of those experiences in meditation answered any of my questions. Therefore, I felt disappointed. I said, this is not what I wanted. So I had a frequent meetings with the great master and brought these issues to his notice. And he said that meditation is a mental technique to allow you to go close to yourself. Yourself is not the body. Yourself is not sitting outside. Yourself is sitting inside this body. It is within the body that you will get your answers, not outside. You have been searching outside all the time. And inside is very different from what you think it is. And he told me, to find the inside, you must concentrate on the inside. Your mind will not let you do that. Remember, the mind has been given to you to explore creation, to explore sense, rationalize outside world which has been created for that purpose. The mind is a tool given to you so that you can use it for exploring the creation. And you have been using it. The mind has done its job. Very clearly the mind has been a good friend of yours. It is functioning for the purpose for which it was created. To explore the world. Think about things outside. Enjoy. Suffer. Do everything through the mind. The mind is merely a channel for your experience of creation. It's not yourself. Do not think that when you think that is your own thinking. You are empowering an instrument given to you to explore the world. And you are using your own power of consciousness to make the mind alive and then use it for exploring the world. That's all. You are not thinking of yourself. You are thinking of the world. Thoughts will never take you inside, no matter how, how hard you think. He gave such beautiful answers. My whole focus had to turn to something different from the thoughts, from the mind. I had to find out what is empowering the mind. What is that inside us that empowers the mind and makes it function like that? What empowers the mind to create senses, to create a body, to create a world and create enjoyment and suffering of this world? What is that power? That must be the real self. He told me that's what you have to explore. Therefore, do not follow the mind. The mind will do its job. Do not try to control the mind. Nobody has been able to control the mind. He quoted a famous mystic who said, if somebody says to me, he has picked up the Himalaya mountains. Very difficult to pick up a big mountain. But for a moment I say, maybe there is such a person who can do it. If somebody says, I have swallowed all the water of the oceans, it's impossible. But for a moment I say, yes, it is, maybe somebody has been born like this. But if somebody comes to me and says, I have controlled my mind, I will say, never, never, never. <laughs> mind cannot be controlled. There is no question. Nobody has done it. The mind plays tricks upon it when we think we have controlled it. It just leads you into another line of thinking. Therefore, he said, ignore the mind. Don't try to change it. It is performing its function as it is programmed. Therefore, this path is not controlling the mind. This path is to discover yourself that controls everything, including empowering the mind. You have to find your own self. It made a total different journey. All that meditation I am doing was with the mind. It was more effort, more mental effort, more effort to the body. 
he did not yield any results. Then I discovered, in one of his talks he said, what can take you within yourself is that which is pulling yourself. Yourself is your soul. Soul is not the mind. What is soul? Soul is the conscious ability to use the mind, to use the body, to use the senses. That is yourself. Don't mix up soul and mind. Mind is a machine given to you to use. Soul is yourself. Find your soul. Soul is the power which is using all these things. And if you don't empower them, these won't function. But since you have come into this world for a particular purpose, the purpose being to enjoy, to, to work and see what's going on, the ups and downs, roller coasters, go through that. But when you're ready to end this program, go back to your own self. And that can be done by being pulled by something that is in the soul. Then he explained to me that the mind thinks, mind senses, sense perceptions that come are all understood and made into actual experiences by the mind. Sense perceptions by themselves don't mean anything to us. He said, if you look at these flowers, they look like flowers. They have a personality flower, so beautiful. But if the mind does not call them flowers, it does not see them, the beautiful flowers. They are merely little pieces of color put together in a certain form. Sense perceptions can only see the colors put in a certain form. They cannot make it flowers. The flowers are made by the mind. That is why the mind does a lot of sensing. The mind does a lot of rationalization. The mind puts things together. Mind uses logic. Mind functions in time. If there is no time, there is no mind. Mind cannot function if there's no time. Your soul, he said, can function without time. Therefore, remember there's a very big difference between the mind and the soul. The mind requires time for the smallest thought. And without thought it can do nothing. That is why, don't think of the mind as a high quality self. It's not yourself. You are using the mind. And who is using the mind is the self, and that's your soul. The soul does some things on its own, even if there's no mind. Or even if the mind is functioning in one way, the soul can do something different at the same time. And the soul does these things all the time, at every level. Even when there was no mind, the soul was still functioning. When there was mind, the soul was still functioning to make it alive. When you had the senses and the body, Mind was still functioning, soul was still functioning, making all these work. It does not mean that the soul goes to sleep when you come into this world. Soul makes this whole world alive for you. If there was no soul, no experience would take place. Soul is the cause and is the real form of consciousness that makes you conscious of everything, including this world. So look at that, which is functioning without time and functions continuously. No matter where you are, no matter what state you are, it will be functioning. That is life itself. Life functions independently. Soul gives life. The rest are just using life. The body is using life. Mind uses life. Sense perceptions use life. Soul is life. It does not use life, it is life. Therefore, look for that. This kind of conversation I had over many sessions with the great master. And then I began to find that the more I conversed with him, the more I liked him. Because he was telling things which were hitting somewhere in me. They were not hitting my mind so much. My mind kept on thinking, what is he saying? What is he saying? And he was keeping on hitting somewhere else. I said, this man, such a loving person, what's happening? What's happening to me? When he explained that soul is what loves, it made sense to me immediately. Love is not experienced by the mind, nor by the body, nor by the senses. Love is experienced by the soul. When soul experiences love, it can stretch all over. The mind feels happy, the senses feel happy, the body feels happy. But the love is of something spiritual, with the spirit. Then he explained the real secret of discovering yourself is to discover the soul and its love. That masters come here 
not to teach us anything. They come here to love us and to pull with the love that comes from their soul to our soul. This is a relationship between soul and soul. Nothing to do with the body and the mind. It's a big revelation for me. I thought that masters were teaching something, how to meditate, how to discover things, how to have new kind of visions inside, how to go to heavens, how to go to astral plane, how to fly in the sky. I have different ideas. He explained to me, no, if you want to find your own self, which is you, we say we are trying to find the self, we are trying to find our true home. If, if you want to find the true home, follow one path, the path of love and devotion. He explained, love comes from the master because it is overflowing all the time. When we feel that love and we feel a similar feeling, we call it devotion. We don't fully understand because we mix up the experience of love we are having with the, with the mental th thought that come along with it. Our response to the master's love is mixed because we mix our thoughts. What is happening? Yeah, it's great. Our thoughts are commenting, sometimes negative, sometimes positive, on the experience we are having with the love of a master. Master love flows all the time. It never ends. And therefore, our mixed feelings, sometimes good, sometimes not so good, sometimes doubtful, sometimes very accepting, it makes us into devotees of that love. And we begin to experience devotion for a master. It is this love and devotion that the secret of discovering the self. For love comes from the self, even devotion comes from the self. All the mind participates partly in it. The mind participates when it gets happy about something. The mind loves pleasure and happiness. The mind's greatest need is pleasure, happiness. It looks for it outside, but it can't see anything inside. And it's constantly looking for happiness, pleasure, joy somewhere outside. It does not want to go inside because when you close your eyes, it's dark, there's nothing there. It just wants to look outside. But when something starts happening inside, by our trying to be inside and the mind starts enjoying it, it loves to go inside as much as the soul wants to discover itself. The mind becomes the best friend. Till then, it can be called one of the worst enemies because it's not letting you go in. And then after that, it becomes your best friend. It says, let's meditate, let's see some more, let's have some good time. Let's think of master. The mind starts saying the same thing. The very big transformation takes place. That is why when we do meditation, an experience of working with the mind, with love and devotion, an experience of our soul, when we work these together, we get results. That's what I discovered. Then I looked back upon all the other paths I had examined and I found they were aware of these things. They were aware of love. They were talking about love. But their love was very different. They were trying to create love with images, some of them. Some were trying to create love with people. Some were trying to create love with some other thing, which were all created. They were loving creation. A few of them wanted to love their own self, but they wanted to love the energy in them. They were very concentrated on the energy inside us. And they wanted to use energy to help other people. I examined all the other paths once again after I found the truth. And I said, what is the distinction between what they are talking about? They are talking of energy. What am I talking about? I am not talking about energy at all. What am I talking about this love and all that? Is it energy? Not at all. There is no energy in love involved. It is such a strange experience. It's an experience of the self. If you want to know who you are, where is the energy involved? Energy is external to the self. Therefore, I discovered very big truth. And very big truth based upon our knowledge of this physical body. The truth I discovered, and this was especially relevant to the yoga practices I did with the yogis who taught me the yoga of concentrating attention and doing different mantras on different centers, the chakras at the bottom. And also how to do the kundalini reversal. They taught me that. 
So when you do these things, you are using energy. I discovered that the six centers which function to maintain life, equilibrium of life in this body and with the relationships we have around us, these six centers are doing, they are all energetic centers. They are all giving us energy of various kinds. Each one, each of these centers has a separate energy and it functions almost like a network. And I could draw pictures now saying how they are connected with each other and how the whole network operates of the energies. These six centers start from the bottom and they, the, uh, the rectum, the genitals, the, the digestive system, the navel, the heart system, the throat and the eyes. These are the centers. <coughs> and they want to add a center top of the head, the crown chakra. These centers of energy, they bring us back to where we are right now. I discovered that. Right now, we are at the eye center because we are awake at physical level, looking outside with the eyes. Other centers give us experiences which are different. Some of them can give you out-of-body experiences. Some of them can be all physical stuff, all stuff that we can examine here. Sometimes it looks like a very weird experience. I remember I was a student at Harvard University in this country. I got a fellowship. And there I discovered that the people were having a good time studying in that university. It's a big, nice, beautiful campus. I had come from India. There were two or three other candidates who had come from India. We all got a fellowship together. We were living in a small apartment, studying hard for the new subjects we were studying. And those, the three other friends of mine who were living in the same house with me because we couldn't afford separate places, we shared that place and they would go and have a party and enjoy themselves. And I sat studying, thinking, remembering great master. I was doing something different from them. They would say, come, let's have a party, somebody giving drinks and a lot of meat will be served. I said, I'm vegetarian, I don't drink. Oh no, you are missing something. Don't you know where you are? Don't forget, this is America. We can enjoy ourselves. They come from India. I said, I am enjoying myself without going to your party. Now, don't be a hypocrite like that. Come with us. I said, sorry, excuse me. There was a Muslim friend of theirs who used to have big parties. He was living for a long time in Cambridge. He used to have big parties. So he would enjoy them and they would say, there's one guy who has come from India with us. He doesn't come to the parties. And we are afraid that when we go back to India after our courses here, he is going to tell our wives what we were doing. <laughs> he said, Muslim friend said, bring him over. I have seen many Indians like him who come up vegetarian and all that and I have a very good cure for them. Give them a nice party and they all convert. Bring your friend. They said, if, he said, if they come, if he comes and joins the party, he'll never tell your wives anything, nor will he tell his own wife. Anyway, these people, these three friends tried to convince me, you must go to the parties. I said, forgive me, you know, this is not my life. I don't drink, I don't party, I've given up all this stuff long ago, it's not my, my life, I've grown up too much now into some other things, so please forgive me. Then they said, made a statement which affected me very deeply. They said, you have a great master, you say. What kind of master do you have that you are afraid even to go to a party? I was shocked to hear that. They are challenging my master. I said, I'll go to your party. And I went to the party next day. The host said, don't have any vegetarian food here. We have to convert a guy who thinks he's vegetarian forever. Don't have any soft drinks here. Only alcohol. Because the guy is coming, these fellows tell us, he is very strict about these things. We have to break his strictness today. 
That was the kind of party they arranged. And I was invited and I went there. When I went there, by chance I found a few people who were at that time attending a yoga institute set up by two professors of the university, Dr. Richard Elbert and Professor Timothy Leary. Two people who were experimenting with Mexican mushrooms, with LSD, DMT, secured from a Swiss pharmaceutical company. And they were having unusual experiences with those drugs. And they still call it a yoga center. <laughs> they didn't perform any yoga. Yoga was, oh, something like that. <laughs> something like that. Now they were sitting there. They happened to be sitting very close to where they seated me. And they were talking of the session they had the same day. When they told me, they felt that the walls were becoming pink and were coming towards us. I said, yes, the walls come like this. I began to talk their language. They said, you are also in it. <laughs> I said, no. But these things are very easy things to secure with your yogic exercise. Put your attention on the heart. I can get you right now. The same experiences. What are you talking about? These are energetic experiences. This is energy that you are just experiencing. This is not yourself you're experiencing. They came close and sat close to me. Tell us more. And they were three, four people. And they said, come on here. There's some other of that group also sitting on the other side. They all came. And gradually, that crowd around me began to grow. And the host was shouting, come and have drinks. Come and have beer. They said, order some vegetarian food. And order some, something for him to drink whole menu was changed. Yeah. And these three friends of mine were surprised at the miracle that had happened. I said, now you know great master is great. <laughs> you thought something else will happen here and see what happened. It's a very interesting experience. Great master has given me a series of such experiences throughout my life. It's just one I'm sharing with you. That his presence has changed people around me and I watch and I see great master, how can you do that? He says, these people who are around you are seekers of the same thing you are. Don't see any difference between them. You are a seeker, they are seekers. They are finding the same thing you are finding. And because they are around, and I am with you, I am with them. It's a very startling thing for me. I realized that this is a great thing that I can have my friends sit with me, especially on a day when he manifests with the maximum basket of, of goodies, of grace to share. And I began to say, at Bandara, which I used to attend, I invited friends to attend with me. I'm so happy that you are all around here for that purpose today. I'm so happy that you have come to share Great Master's grace today. That's the Bandara. Bandar means abundance. Bandara means the celebration of abundance. And the abundance we are sharing is the abundance of grace of Great Master today, which you will all experience. I can see it. You will not be able to see it. I can see His grace pouring on you. And I can see right from one end to the other. Nobody is being spared from the grace. If you want to escape, you won't be able to escape today. <laughs> the grace is too powerful. And grace is coming from an area which you really are interested in. It's not coming from the energy centers at all. It's coming from the centers of awareness. The centers of awareness are all above the eyes, behind and above the eyes, not below. The body has been constructed, the human body has been constructed in a remarkable way. First of all, to experience this world, it's a very unique body. And then, on top of it, to experience spirituality. It's a great, wonderful body. There's nothing like the human body. If you want to find spirituality, it's the best form of life that you can get. There are possibilities of examining energy, energetic centers. There's a possibility of examining awareness, knowing how you know, finding out how you are alive. Finding out why you are having these experiences, getting answers to all your fundamental questions. 
I got answers to all my fundamental questions, not from all the practices I did, not even from meditation according to this system, the great master taught, but by the art of withdrawing yourself to your own self where all the answers lie. So far as mental questions are concerned, they can be found very easily in the second stage of your experience inside. The second stage we call the causal stage where the mind has cooked up all the questions and answers. We don't ask questions here without the answer sitting there. The answers are there, questions are there. So when we ask a question, we get the answer from there. When you are there without the awareness of the body and your sense perceptions, all the answers are right in front of you. You realize they were your questions and your own answers. You didn't expect from anybody else. But when you are not there, you put the question to somebody else. Then somebody else answers you and it ticks with the answer already sitting in you. Is that the correct answer? If it does not, it doesn't impress you at all. That's not a correct answer. It's not that somebody else giving a reply to you or giving an answer to your question is giving the right answer. You will accept it or not accept it, whether it clicks with you with the answer that's already there. What is inside us is amazing. It's amazing what you can find inside. People talk about it. Books have been written about it. Nobody's gone inside. Great master used to talk with very great force that we talk so much about the truth and about reality and we talk about stages of experiences. Why don't you go in and see? There's so much more talk than going within. This is not a path of talk. This is a path of action. You go within and find out what's going on there. You'll be surprised how much is going on there. Even little glimpses that you get from there tell you so much about yourself. It tell you so much of what you're interested in. I can give you a so, few examples of our curiosities in this world, which can all be solved from there. Some people say, is there life outside in some planet? Scientists are trying to examine. Is there water on another planet, somewhere in another galaxy? Do you know that if you are in the astral plane, you can fly to the place? You can, there's an overlap area in your experience inside where you can fly and see it for yourself. Do you know that so much curiosity we have about things can all be resolved from inner experiences? You will realize something so strange that what you think is external is being created from a blueprint inside. The blueprint is inside. You can have access to the very things you think are external. Are all inside. And what is inside is inside, which is not all been revealed outside. Outside is a very, very small fraction of what has been revealed. And I'm only talking for the first stage. Withdrawal only up to the astral plane. It only requires that you concentrate your attention on the self. How do you know where is the self? Well, we all know where is the self. Don't you know from where you are talking? Don't you know from where you are thinking? Don't you know where you are operating from? If I'm carrying my body around, where do I give instructions? Let's go. Where do I give instructions to the body? Am I not doing it from the head? When I open my eyes, don't I see from inside from the head? It's very well known where we are inside the head. It's in the brain. It's, in the, it's right in the center of the brain. Right behind the eyes, in the middle. We know where we are in the body. Therefore, when we want to be there, we have great powers given to us. Those powers look so ordinary. First power, imagination. I want to imagine, I am not sitting in this chair, I am sitting there, I can imagine right now. So can you. If I say, would you like to come and stand near me? You can all imagine, you are here. Imagination is the power to place yourself where you like. You don't know where you are? Okay, imagine you are there. If you are not at the third eye center, you are. You don't have to search for it. Many people are searching. After doing meditation for years, they say we are still searching the third eye center. Don't search. You are searching from there. You are there. What are you searching for? You cannot be anywhere else. When you are awake, you are at the third eye center. There is no, no other place for you to go. 
but you are only spread your experience from there all around through scattering of attention. You have scattered your attention and therefore you feel it's all happening somewhere else. You lost where you are. You are from where you are scattering your attention. And that is why it's so simple. Instead of scattering your attention, gradually bring it back from where you are scattering it. That's the eye center. What is there to discover? But if you want to know where it is, because you are not sure, you want to imagine where you are, all right, close your eyes, it's in the head, between the ears, very clear place. Close your eyes and imagine, imagine. Not know, because you don't know. You should be knowing, but I don't know why you don't know. But if you can't know, imagine you are in the head, sitting there and looking at the darkness in front, because eyes are closed. The eyes are open, you see what is outside. When you close your eyes, you can't see outside. But if you keep your eyes closed, other things start coming in front of you. Imaginary things. Where are you watching the imaginary things from? From the third eye center. If you can be there and say, I want to see what is on my right without opening my eyes. You try to turn. You, very difficult. You turn your head. Why am I turning my physical head? Can I turn my inner head? Yes, you can. Then that is separate from the physical body. A little practice of this kind, which, which we can do in meditation, helps us to discover that what we think we are imagining is there is ourself in a different form. The form is different because we are very light. We have no weight there. We can jump up, which we can't jump that high with the body. We can even fly with that self. Imaginary, of course, it's imaginary. But so what if it is imaginary? Who is it doing it? Who is imagining it? The self. It's not somebody else doing it. The self is doing it. You have to reach the self. And when you reach that form, you can go further and meditate with that form. Then what happens? You discover another form. It's yourself. You, nobody else is discovering anything. You are discovering it. And you can go further and get such experiences which answer your questions. You can find out at the astral plane that what you thought was a time flowing outside was something on which you could stop time when you like. Something you can never do outside. You can go to the causal plane and find you can easily travel on time that's been created both forward and backward. You can easily go further in the second plane and find out where all the destinies have been made from where you picked up your destiny to have experience in the sensory and in the physical world. These are all possible within our own self. Imagine the excitement one gets to be able to have all those experiences. The joy and help you get. And on top of it, since you are going within with the whole of the love of a master, which you are doing your best in meditation. What is the best is that you are thinking of master so that you can have your feeling of love and devotion. You can have a feeling of devotion. Master, I don't know how to love you, but I remember you, I think of you. That is love and devotion. When a man says, I don't know how to have devotion, he's having devotion. Why is he telling the master that? When you think of the master, it is love and devotion. If you think all the time, you are fully in love and devotion. If you can do it during meditation, it is meditation with love and devotion. So that's why when you do that, Master's love is pulling you. And it's much faster to have these experiences. Otherwise, it's a little slower. With your own effort, you can get those experiences. It takes longer time. But beyond the mind, beyond the causal plane, there is no way to go anywhere except with the pull of the Master. Because the only way we can go is where there is no mind, no thinking, no effort. And that is when the love of the Master pulls us with it. And if you are initiated by a perfect living Master, that's what you experience right there. Perfect living Master looks like an ordinary being, behaves like an ordinary being, is an ordinary being, but his awareness is constantly in touch with totality. He's, con he's always functioning in his physical body, from there. Therefore, his love is flowing from your true home, which is his true home. Everybody's true home is one. 
and his his love is flowing from there. That is why such a master cannot distinguish between people based on classification done here, based on religion, based on belief systems, believe based on color of the skin, based upon cultures. He cannot see those distinctions here because he sees they are all part of the same one, and he is that one. There is no difference between him and others. And I want to tell you that in this teaching of the great master, whose Bandara we celebrate today, according to him, everybody has the same thing in them that a perfect living master has. He does not give anything extra. He is not saying, "Okay, I'll put your true home into you now." True home is already there. He does not say, "I'll put you all these stages into you now." <laughs> not at all. All he does is. to put his image in your memory so that you can recall and that's a way to experience love that's all he does that when you are initiated you think of master when you think of master his love flows and therefore you get all the experiences of his love it's so wonderful this experience i met this great master man with the white beard i love his white beard even now i see his white beard everywhere i went to a casino once some people say oh you couldn't be a good disciple if you went to casino <laughs> actually i must confess to you that when i and my wife came first time travel in this country from boston cambridge we were invited by some Some sangis, some followers of masters in California. So we bought our tickets. I told my wife that there is a place called Las Vegas. <laughs> They say it's a very beautiful but sinful city. We haven't committed enough sin, so maybe we should visit there. I bought my tickets. I bought my air tickets to Los Angeles, and from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. to chicago i went there and little realizing that these people think differently when i was going to go back they said give us the tickets we'll get your boarding passes and i gave the tickets las vegas that will destroy your spirituality they told me it's terrible how could you think of going to las vegas sin city and i said Boy, all our plans are being shattered because I should not have given them the tickets. <laughs> anyway, they re rebooked non-stop from Los Angeles to Boston. I went inside, said goodbye. They can't come into inside. I told the ticket man, these are not my original tickets. <laughs> can't I make them original? He said, sure. I said, any cost? I have a few dollars with me. I do it without cost because there is your original ticket. And we changed it. Didn't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and experimented with those one-armed bandits. <laughs> I saw a white seven come on a machine. I saw the white beard right there. I saw white beard in those machines. Can't help it. There is nothing in the world that can distract you. If the love of a master is pulling you, there. no distraction possible. Nothing can distract you. Nothing is equal to it. I'm telling you, this man with the white beard, he is so stuck in me now, and he said something so beautiful one day. I was just doing some seva for him, like I'm doing today. I was doing some seva. He wanted me to help in the construction of a road, and I had some political influence at that time, so I was able to talk to the engineers and others. He said, "Can you help in getting the road done?" And I was doing it. I said, "Master, the road is ready. They are working on it." He said, "These words I can never forget." He said, "Ishwar." In Punjabi, he said, "Mera roam, roam, tere te khush hai." These are the words he used. Every cell of my body is happy with you. I can never forget it. I can never forget those words of great master. Just for doing a little seva for. Just doing a little work for him, he should say like that. I couldn't believe, it. and I can never forget it. Look at the man. 
Look at the power of this man. I have examined it. How much power he has. And he should appreciate a little effort to a certain extent. I have never seen anybody appreciating your little effort in that way. And he gives a reward millions of times from what we do for him. We do a little bit and he gives us so much. How blind are we that we can't see this? How blind are we that a perfect living master is giving so much love, giving so much opportunity, giving us so much stuff, and we can't appreciate it. People have come, they have touched my heart when I see them. When I saw one doctor, Dr. Ishar Singh, I remember him very often. He was a veterinary doctor, a veterinary doctor in Kapoorthala state. Kapoorthala is a town and a state, old princely state. There was a Maharaja of Kapoorthala. And he, this veterinary doctor was taking care of his animals, his horses, camels, elephants. This veterinary doctor, Dr. Hishar Singh, was a great seeker, like all of you. He was a seeker, like you. And he was looking for the truth everywhere he could find. Every holy man would come, he would go to him and seek his blessings and find out what is happening. There were two neighbors of his who were Muslim, Muslim neighbors who were disciples of the great master. And they would tell him, there is a master, he lives very close to you, go and see him. He lives from the Grand Trunk Road, which is running very close to our town, go there and from there take a little trip along the river Bias. The river flowing there, the river Bias. You go three miles down the river and there's a small hut where that man comes only on weekends. He's working in a military engineering service. He comes only on weekends and you go and see him and he'll give you proper answers to what you are looking for. So one day after finishing work, this man, he had a bicycle. He took a bicycle and went down and found the river and went along the river three miles, four miles, eight miles, no hut. He said, that man gave me wrong information. After eight miles, he found there was a ferry station. Some ferries were going across the river. He asked the ferry man that, I am told there is a dera of a master, a hut that he very lives and gives discourses every weekend. I've come on a weekend. I don't see any hut and I don't see any master. He says, sorry man, you are on the wrong side of the river. So many people come on the wrong side of the river. And that's what you have done. So the master is on the other side, only three miles away. He said, can you take me by ferry to the other side? So I'll drive back on my bike to the Dera. He said, no, it's very dangerous. We don't fly the ferry at night. And it'll be dangerous because there are a lot of wild animals on the other side. It's only one little village for which we operate the ferry. And from there to go northwards along the river is very difficult. There's no road there. And that's why people use the ferry. So you won't be able to go. No, no, I'll be able to go. Even along the river I can go. He said, you may have to carry your bike. There is no pathway also to be able to drag the bike. I'll carry the bike on my head. I have to see this master. My friends have told me, my Muslim neighbors have told me, he's a real murshid kamal perfect living master. So I must go and see him. So he went along. Ferryman reluctantly agreed and took him on the other side of the village. And this man started a journey at night. No pathway. His, his legs were with the thorns around him. And he had to carry the bike on his head. Took a long time to search, trying to keep as close to the river as he could. Ultimately, early morning, he was able to reach what looked like a hut and he stopped there. He said, this must be the place. So he knocked on the door and a woman comes out. Elderly woman shouted at him. You guys have no sense what time to come and knock at the door of people. He said, I have come to see master. Are you stupid to find you? This is the time to see a master? This is the time to knock at his door? She used very <coughs> abusive language, which I cannot even tell you now. <laughs> he was so shocked. He knew there was a woman and he knew the name given by the, his neighbors. That her name was Bibi Rukko and she had served several masters. 
she had been to swami ji of agra who started radha swami faith she had been with baba jamal singh who was master of my master and she was now with the master baba sawan singh and if she is so angry uses this kind of language this is no master if she has learned nothing with all these masters what am i wasting my time to come to see this man disappointed he went back in the morning he told those those neighbors of his you were totally wrong that's not a master there is a woman who lives with him and supposed to be taking care of him or whatever but she is so abusive she is so angry a woman and she shouted at me like that i'm never going to see this master again and they laughed at him they said master played a trick on you so what do you mean master i never even saw him he said that was the trick he played on you he wanted to know are you a seeker of the master or not you never saw the master therefore you are no seeker of the master you are seeking that woman's anger and you saw it and came back you never even met the master that woman is a very kind woman she never talks like that she talks to you only like that it's your test you failed he said oh i'm sorry i should try once again he said all right so he found out the master's time and he found out that the land around that house along that hut where master was coming on weekends belonged to a very big chief chief of that area so the chief also used the doctor for his animals so he went to the chiefs he said chief next to your land on that river there is a hut of a master let's go and see him the chief said no way i'll never go near him he said why not he said i hear that whoever goes there never comes back i don't like to take the risk he said chief how can that be nobody can stay there forever i have been to the hut this old lady there that's all nobody is there otherwise this master only comes on weekends and he stays there for the, in the hut which was built by his master and come okay if you don't want to go to the hut we'll go to a distance and see from there the master is going to give a talk at 5 o'clock in the evening and let's go in the evening and see him from a distance the chief agreed so the chief and dr isha singh they went to the little hut the dera which became the dera still is the big dera now and they stood at a distance master had just started giving a discourse he had a book in his hand and he was alone sitting on the stage small stage they had made up little high but 25 people sitting in front 20 or 25 people sitting in front he was giving a discourse and he would pick up the book read a line or two from the book and put the book aside and explain what he read that was the discourse he was giving in that format so they listened when master saw two people standing he put the book aside and did like this come here and isha singh said to the chief he is calling you he knows you are the land owner here he said no he is not calling me he is calling you no he is calling you no he is calling you <laughs> little debate then they said let us separate and see who is calling so the chief went on one side dr isha went on the other side the master looked they separated he looked at isha singh and called him. so isha singh went and he sat down at the back master picked up the book put the book back said come in front sit in front so isha singh moved and sat in front looking at the master and the book in his hand he found the secret the book was the secret that was the real secret book in which all the secret messages were there that's where he was getting all the knowledge so he saw the master read the book and explain beautifully he said i have found the whole secret of this master it's in that little book this course finished he got up master i have a request to make he said what is it the young visitor he said i am mr singh doctor from kapurthala okay doctor what do you want i want your book he said no 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 you can't have this book master i want the book only for overnight i will sit outside your hut i want to read this book at night in the morning i'll give it back to you 
Mahesha Singh told me his plan was if he hand over the book, he'll run away. <laughs> He's just making a trick to get the book. The master said, no, even I get up in the right night and read the book sometimes. So, sorry. Master, you give the book. I have 75 rupees in my pocket. I'll give all 75. He said, even if you gave me a million rupees, I won't give you the book. He got absolutely convinced. That's the book. <laughs> the book is the whole secret. So he said, you are very tough, master. You hold on to this real secret which is in your hand. He said, sorry, young man. I'm sorry I can't give you the book. Anyway, disappointed, he says, he went back. In the morning, he told his friends, I have found out the secret. That book, it's, I know I saw the name of it. It's a very secret book. It's called Saar Bachan. They said, Saar Bachan? That is sold in all the store for two rupees. <laughs> <laughs> now, Isha Singh says, had he given me the book, what would have happened? I would have run away with the book. I thought that's the only thing that he knows. So, he said, I'll go back now because Master, he said, he played another trick on you. Did you see that BB was so nice? Yes, he was very kind and nice. Same lady. He said, I have to go again now. So, after that, one day he came on a day when Master was there, sitting. Master was sitting outside the hut on a little chair. Anisha Singh comes and says, Master, I have heard you. I have read the book also. It's available in the market. I know what you are teaching. You are teaching how initiation changes a man's life. I want initiation. Great Master said, have you broken your arm? He said, is that a requirement? <laughs> he said, it's not a requirement. It is just that in your destiny, it is so written that after you have a fracture in your arm and you get healed, I will initiate you. That's the timing. If Master, but why would I fracture my arm? He says, one can fall from a horse. You ride horses. You come on a horse right now to me. And one can fall from a horse and fracture one's arm. He said, Master, I have been riding my horse all my life. I never had a fall. Why would I fall in a fracture? He says, no, there's a timing written for everybody. Initiation is timed according to our length of seeking from several lifetimes. A time comes when we are ready. And that's the time when you get initiated. Your time is written after your arm is fractured by a fall and it is healed. Then you come back to me and I'll initiate you. I know you have to be initiated, but certainly after that event. He said, Master, very short kind of condition you have laid down. Then he had to go back. When he reached home, his wife, whose name was Maya, she said, the prince has been calling you, the Maharaja has been calling you all day from the palace. Where is my doctor? Where is my doctor? Please go. There must be something very serious with one of his animals or something. So he ran to the palace. And the Maharaja was sitting in his palace and on the throne with a lot of attendants around. He said, where have you been, doctor, all day? I've been calling you all day. I went to see the Maharajji. They used to call the master Maharajji. He said, there's no Maharaj except me. I am the Maharajji. <laughs> there's no other Maharaj. He said, no, he's, he's a saint. He's a saint. We call him that. He said, no, these are all bogus people. No, I'm sorry you wasted your day. Now come, I'll tell you why I'm waiting for you. Only today I've got two new horses, straight from Saudi Arabia, the Arabian breed, very nice horses. And I have told everybody, I will inaugurate these horses with my doctor sitting on one horse and I sitting on the other. I'm still waiting for you. Bring the horses. He said, excuse me, I will not ride the horse. <laughs> he said, what will happen to you? Every day you ride with me. Every day you are riding horses. These are new horses. No, master, I don't want to fracture my arm. <laughs> Who told you to fracture your arm? That master told me. Don't believe such superstitious things. <laughs> Nobody can predict you will break your arm or not. Come on, sit on the horse. Please forgive me. Okay, looks to save my face. The Maharaja said, to save my face, just sit on the horse. I'll sit on the horse. You get off from the other side, I'll go. Or that's agreeable. So he sat on one horse and the Maharaja sat on the other horse. Then the Maharaja left, his horse bounced forward 
and hit some stone and fell. Issues in get multiple fractures of the right arm. He said that master is too powerful. He knows everything. I couldn't have helped it. But thank God, with the pain, he's exclaiming, thank God, I'll get initiated from the master. <laughs> anyway, it got plastered all over the arm, he was with the hand, in bad shape, it took several weeks for it to heal. And when after the plaster was removed, he found there was calcification and he could not move the arm very well. He said, but I have done what the master said, I broke my arm and I'm ready for initiation. So he went back to great master. Master initiate me. Master said, raise your right hand to your ear. He said, Master, I can't do that. Sorry, I can't initiate you. <laughs> master, what kind of new condition you put every time? He said, this is not a new condition. I told you last time, after you have broken your arm and healed, then come to me. It's not healed. He says, Master, there's no way of healing. It becomes like stone. There's a calcification. He said, when your horses get calcification, what do you do? Oh, I put very strong assets to dissolve. And that is so painful. The horse hits the ground and makes a hole in it. So, why don't you apply a little to yourself? That's right, I'll die with that. Can you dilute it a little bit in oil? Dilute in one ratio, 1 to 16, instead of 1 to 4, something like that. And try it in that form. Okay, Master, if you say so, I'll do that. And he tried the treatment and he was able to move his arm. And then he got his initiation. I'm telling you the story of a man who went through this for initiation. Imagine it's the same initiation I and many others got so easily. We sometimes say how lucky we were to get the same blessing without having to fracture our arms, <laughs> without having to fall from horses. He said, this is the best thing I've got. He made such, he had such a powerful experience of the love of the Master. And he's the one who said, I said yesterday, he's the one who said, the master is Yar Pele, those Pele, a Sadhguru Bhagavan. He is a friend first and master afterwards. If he's not a friend, he cannot be a master. He said very strongly these things. Then he found out the best thing one can get is to get a darshan of a perfect living master. He said, the best thing I can do for my dad is to get him the darshan of this master. So he told his dad, Dad, I found a real perfect saint. I'm convinced about him. I want you to go and see him. He says, I, be I belong to this Sikh religion. We only believe in the Holy Granth Sahib. And our Holy Scripture has said that after the tenth master dies, this book will be the master. And therefore, we are accepting the book as master. We don't accept any other master. And the book is the master. We can't accept a human being as a master anymore. Sorry, I can't go to that man. He tried to persuade him several times. He said no. He came to great master. He said, I want to bring my father. I want him to be initiated by you. But he doesn't want to come. He said, Isha Singh, bring your father to me. That's your job. I will initiate him, that's my job. He said, that's great, Master, let's do a little trick on my dad. At the railroad station, in the Bias station, I'll bring my dad with some excuse that to be, I have to go to see the station master or something. And you are leaving the same day, I remember, on the train. So when I bring the master, you're on the train, will you give your darshan to him and see him? He said, certainly I did. So on that day, great master was standing on the platform of the station. And Isha Singh told his dad, I am going up to the Vyas station. Would you like to come along with me? He said, okay, I'll come. They both came on horseback. And he said, can you hold my horse for a minute? I will go and see the station master and come back. He said, okay. So dad stood on top of the station, a little below. There's a little difference in the height. So he held the horse the reign of the second horse, and Isha Singh ran down. He said, Master, ten minutes more for your train. Will you come up and see my dad? Certainly. And Isha Singh and dad are both running up the hill to go to the... When they reached up, the dad had gone. He suspected there's something going on. 
because he missed the chance to see the master. And he left Isha Singh horse play. See, and the master said, sorry. I'm sorry I could not see him. And he came back, took the train. Isha Singh tried many things and he didn't work. One day, he said, now the story I'm going to tell is only good on those days, not nowadays. <laughs> One day, he decided that the beds are very small and easy, light beds on which we sleep. In India at that time, he brought a big rope and he tied up his master in the early morning. Master said, what are you doing? Master, I'm taking you to my master. He said, is this the way to take him? He had arranged a horse cart, a tonga, a horse cart, to be ready. And, and he tied the master, the strong man, picked up the whole bed with the dad on it, not the master, the dad on it. He tied up the dad and brought him out, put him on the horse cart and said, we are off to the Dera to see the master. <laughs> and the dad cried, my son is mad. What's happened to him? All the neighbors came out. He said, what's happening? He said, see, my dad has got crazy. I'm taking him to hospital. He said, I'm not crazy. My son is crazy. They said, take him quickly. <laughs> take him quickly. And he told the horse cart man, take quickly to the Dera. And this man cried, tried to escape from the ropes and as they reached the Dehra, great master was sitting on a chair outside and he saw a man shouting, <laughs> being bound by ropes and Isha Singh drive, uh, riding on a horse next to him, coming. Great master got up, so what's this going on? So when they came, Isha Singh says, Master, I brought my dad. <laughs> you told me, bring my, bring your dad, I brought him. He said, is this the way to bring? Look what you are doing to the old man. He said, he's getting hurt. You are bad. The dad said, that's what I've been telling him. He is mad. Is this the way to bring me to your place? Dad, dad told Seval asked, take him off. And he's so injured because of the rope. Apply some balm, take him inside. So, so the master went inside. He says, he was outside. Master says, initiate him. How will he do it? There's no chance of getting my dad initiated in these circumstances. Master comes out, quietly whispering to him like this, Go away. Come after three days. <laughs> he says he left. <laughs> Nothing will happen in three days. Nothing will happen in three months with my dad. I know him. After three days, he says he returned. And he saw great master sitting in the chair outside. And his dad standing in front of him with folded hands like this. He rubbed his eyes. <laughs> Is that my dad? And as he approached, his horse happened to dirt the place. And Isha Singh dad saw that the horse was dirtying the place. He took off his shirt to go and clean the place. He said, you fool, in the presence of such a great master, you're dirtying this place. You are mad. He said, is that you, Bapu? Bapu used to call him Bapu. Is that you, Dad? You were so mad, you never told me who he is. I have understood my own scriptures from him. The whole scripture is speaking of a living Sadguru. The whole Granth is talking of the Gurus who are all alive human beings. All ten were human beings. And their worship is all of those Gurus who are human beings. And it says all the time, unless the Guru can place his hand on your head unless he can talk to you in a certain way, unless he can give you darshan. You don't get anything. He's explained to me everything. You never told me, you stupid mad son of mine. <laughs> he said, I can't believe. He said, do you know how much grace this man has given me? He's so good, he initiated me this morning. <laughs> That's how he says, since dad got initiated. Don't try these experiments with your dads, please. <laughs> Those were different times, a different country, a different location. I am telling you these stories. I remember so many stories. I remember so many things about this great man, the great master, whose Bandara we celebrate today. It's amazing. And he never took credit for what he did. He was always conscious of his own master. One of the BBs who traveled with him was BB Lajo. And some of the 
recordings of her conversations and her events with great master have been recorded and translated by a bibi who is sitting amongst us a bibi raj who is sitting amongst us she has prepared a few books recording those events when i read those tears come into my eyes because she has recorded those very incidents that i somehow saw some of them with great master and she writes how that bibi lajo would tell master master look at the miracle you just performed he would say no kako he would call her kako call all the young girls or old girls as kako like a daughter no kako it's not me which baba jamal singh doing it i never do anything so always baba jamal singh would do he never took any credit for himself he gave all the credit to his master passed away on 20 on 29th of december 1903 and he celebrated that as a bandara of his master 29th december was a bandara we used to join him on the bandara i being a great questioner he probably allowed me more entry into his presence than many other certainly not many children of my age so i know at least on two occasions he took me inside the little hut which was left intact around which his whole house was built the little hut was the hut which baba jamal singh used he used to go in there sit for a few moments to i see took me inside that hut so the only day i saw so many tears in his eyes tears of love for his master how he remembered his master it was remarkable i have seen tears in the eyes of his disciples the most touching tears that i ever even heard of were again in the eyes of this dr ishar singh and the story telling today with this this very story great master used to do his work in the dera only he never traveled outside ishar singh requested him one day master wouldn't it be great if you could come out to kapoorthala it's only 20 miles away you can come there and bless me and my house and all the sangat of kapoorthala all the disciples of kapoorthala would be waiting to see you and i'll tell everybody to clean my house and keep it ready for you great master for the first time agreed to go outside the dera he said ishi singh i will come to your house let's fix a date the date was fixed there were at that time two prominent disciples of great master who lived in the same city one was judge darayal kapoor who who name i mentioned yesterday who became the doorman of master after retirement he was still working at a big house in kapoorthala the other was professor jagmohan lal a professor also at a reasonably good house they both had good houses when they heard that master had agreed to come to their town they prepared rooms for master that he probably liked to stay in one of those houses so ishar singh had a very small little house one room house virtually where he lived and there was a courtyard in front where there used to be cows and buffalo and animals outside so he cleared the animals and he was called all the satsangis to clear the place they was trying to clear the place and make it clean for the master they prepared in their homes rooms for the master in case he decides to stay in one of their houses so one of them had a nice car also they said we'll bring you master in my car the judge said i'll bring you in my car master is agreed or said i can travel in your car so on that day ishu singh was waiting and all the disciples were waiting around him that ishu singh has agreed to come to my house and his house was as they entered the city on a road there was a little lane that went in about 100 yards and then the house to be they were close to that lane to see the great master come and maybe he can turn his car in and then stop or maybe stop at the main road so they were waiting near the main road the judge was in the car professor was in the car and as they went they took the car straight ahead did not stop at that lane at all all the satsangis told ishar singh you are a fool how could master such a big master great master come and live in little hut of yours when there such sangis of his disciples of his with two big houses they prepared they told us master will stay in one of the two houses 
you are expecting he'll come and stay in little hut of yours and he's giving darshan in a little uh, open space let's go there and they told this satsang you run there to at least for darshan of master this is just like a fool expecting master will stop here we wasted our time cleaning his house and they all ran away to the place where he was going to give darshan to people and his wife maya was left behind she said why don't you also go at least have darshan he said i am not going master said he's come to my house i have to wait here she said you are a fool and she also left he was alone he got himself inside the room and he locked himself and cried master you told me you will come to my house and these rich people have stolen you away and taken you away to their houses i thought you are a friend of mine and he cried meantime master went out in his car and stopped at the judge's house and he got out from the car all the family and other relations of the judge met him put their heads down to him bowed to him he blessed them and this master we have a room prepared for you here and shall we take your bags out he said no no let them stay so they thought he is going to the professor's house so the drove to the professor's house and there they, he got down all the relatives of the professor were there he blessed them he said master we have a room for you now here shall we take your bags he said no let them stay so master these are two places we prepared for you you can select any one you can whichever you like he said i told that poor isher saying i'll stay with him he said master he has no place he doesn't even have a toilet place for you he had no place to have a bath even he said how does he live how does he oh he goes into a little place on the side for his toilet and he goes bath by taking a bucket of water on top of the roof and there he just puts it on his head i can also do it the master said for a day i can also do it he said master it's very uncomfortable we tell you it's not a proper place for you to stay no i told the poor man that i will be staying coming to see him at least let me go so the car was turned back those of sangeet were there they were all waiting at protection somewhere else and he came back stopped the car outside did not let him go to the don't turn into the lane stop here nobody to follow me his driver his bodyguard shadi was they stayed in the car he walked alone to shri singh's house and he knocked at the door isha singh thought some other satsangi has now come to call him so go away i don't want to care go away master not come here i, I don't want to open the door great master said this is savan singh isha heard the voice he opened the door passed again big hug both master and isha singh with tears in their eyes he said isha singh i will stay here when i make a promise i never break it this is where i will stay for three days all the satsangi will come back here he stayed there had a bath with the water on the bucket in the morning and fulfilled the promise that he had given this is something that has touched people i was in united states in 1963 i told a friend of mine satsangi i said if you ever come to india i want you to meet that man he is such an example of love and devotion for me and he is still alive in kapurthala retired now he said okay his name was roy call roy call traveled with me to india and i took him to the dera showed him the dera how it's expanded so much it's not longer a hut took him to isha singh house in kapurthala and isha singh met him i said this is a disciple seeker like you with so much love and devotion he has come to see you i have brought him to see example of a great disciple he said i am so happy to see him he said he is saying my friend ishwar says that you have a pair of shoes of great master he said yes that's my greatest possession then nothing greater than that say so where are those shoes roy call lost them he said i keep them at a, in a cupboard at a, at a height so i 
look at them and remember Master and his gift. It's just a memory for me. He says, can I see those shoes also? So yes, certainly I will show you. Come all the way from America, I'll show you those shoes. So he opened that cupboard of his and he saw the two old shoes. And Roy Hall put his head on those shoes. He should sing, had tears in his eyes. How can this man, an American, white guy, come to my house and respect my master's shoes like that? He was so emotional about it. After that, Roy Hall, he said, Mr. Roy Hall, I don't know who you are. But what you have done to honor my master's shoes, I don't know what to give you. I don't know how to serve you. He says, when I retired, the Maharaja of Patiala gave me one of his gold braided long coat, made of gold thread. He said, it's the most valuable thing he had. And he gave it to me for retirement gift. I want to give that to you. I don't have more than that to give you for what you have done through my master's shoes. He brought that very hidden that old cloak of his. Beautiful. Princely. Made of gold thread with silk. Beautiful yellow silk and gold thread. And he gave that. So I can't put it on. He said, I look like a king. He said, you are a king because you touched my master's shoes. And Roy Hall took that with him and enjoyed it showing off to people. I have become a king since I went to India. <laughs> but this is something about Isha Singh, how he felt. These are kinds of disciples we have seen. I have seen disciples with so much love and devotion. And it touches my heart to see them. And it is not that they were only there at that time. The same kind of disciples are here also. I mentioned yesterday, I have seen amongst you sitting here, people who were there, come by the easy way of reincarnation. I came in difficult way of immigration. <laughs> and they are having, showing the same love and devotion. They are showing the same thing. We have come because of karma. We have come because of our life, previous lives. The events of our life were fixed because of that. But our awareness can go beyond karma. Our awareness can go beyond our mind. That's what Great Master teaching helps us to do. His following, have, his followers have had experiences way beyond the three worlds of creation. And that's a very big thing. What I come and do as service to him. Let me explain to you. I am nobody. I'm ordinary person like you. I'm a seeker like you. What is happening around why you are here is because of Great Master. It's because of the power of Great Master. It's a master power that brought you here. I give you my talks. It's a service to my master. It's not really doing it for you. It's just that I get a great opportunity to do service. And I speak. And I'm not a guru or something. I'm an ordinary person seeker like you. And yet what happens around is Great Master's power. They say, do you initiate? I said, no. But great master, you can't see him. You see me. So when he approves who is to be initiated, I initiate. And the power is still the same. And they get the same benefit that I got from great master. It's remarkable what is happening around here. Today is the day when I can tell you these things. That the power of great master is, is immense. And it's very difficult to really explain all that he gives us. He gives us so much, it's not even understandable by us. The wealth he is transferring to us through the means of his association by this Bandara. Today is a great day. Every day has been a great day of Bandara that I have ever attended from 1948-49 onwards after his passing away. It's been a very great day. Because I see so many souls getting benefit. Everybody who comes to this day, you have come today, I can tell you from my experience, you are all marked souls. And therefore, you are all entitled to go to your true home. What else, what more could I say? 
that your very presence on this day here has guaranteed you that. And this kind of guarantee doesn't come easily. There's so many, the millions of billions of people living in this world. And not, it's a very small percentage of people who are marked for this kind of experience. Because you have searched for your true home. You not come here for nothing. You search for true home. And great master's power is going to help you to achieve what you have come to seek. And that is why I congratulate all of you. And I give you blessings of great master. So that you will enjoy this great teaching, great experience. And some of you may be ready for moving forward from today. Some may be ready later. Doesn't matter. When one is marked, one is marked. At the right time, things happen. Don't have to break your arm for the right time. <laughs> but some events may take place. Some people say when we come to Bandara, sometimes we had big trouble coming on the way, we had car breakdown on the way. Yes, these things can happen. We are here because of the law of karma that pervades this creation here in the physical universe. The law of karma, action and reaction is operating here. Therefore, we have got events of our life fixed by the karma. It's nothing to do with spirituality. Spirituality has nothing to do with karma. Spirituality has nothing to do with your goodness or badness or the law of karma that you do good things, you get rewarded, you do bad things, you are punished. Nothing to do with spirituality. Spirituality is only based upon the seeking you have in your heart. The seeking in your soul, that's all. If you are a seeker, you will get it. No matter what the circumstances around you are. Masters never come to judge our karmas and say how good a person is, how bad a person is. Good and bad is determined by karma. And therefore they don't look at karma at all. They look at the seeking of the soul. And that is why our readiness comes at a certain time. And then that's the time when a perfect living master appears in our life. And we are able to take advantage of it. I'm very happy you came here. Thank you very much for attending this Bandara with me. It's my celebration. You joined in my celebration. I thank you from my heart. I thank you very much for joining me. And God bless and great master's blessings on all of you. I hope to see you again next Bandara. Or if some of you are coming for active meditation. We'll have a meditation experience in September. You get more information from Jonathan or the people from Isha. And those who are coming to an intensive meditation retreat, IMR. The next one is in Colorado. If you are registered for that, then I'll be seeing you there. Intensive meditation retreat. I think I use these words, but they made it into IMR. I thought like an MRI. <laughs> Somebody told me uh, we are having the next IMR in this hospital. So I didn't remember that this is a, we make short of everything here. We just make little really few letters of everything. So that is why uh, this happened. I am very happy that I was able to share the stories of our great master today and to tell you how strongly it affects you and gives you an experience of pure love you cannot find anywhere else. I have traveled around the world. I've traveled around the world several times and I've met such great seekers, such beautiful people. But the love of the perfect living master, no match. No match. I could not find any match of that. It's so beautiful, so wonderful. You will experience it. You are here on a bandara of that great master. You will experience some pure love. I can tell you that. Thank you very much once again. All blessings of great master.